Hey guys, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel, Home to Inspire DIY and Decor. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. I hope you will consider subscribing and joining my YouTube family. I'd love to have you be a part of my journey. For this first DIY, I'm going to be showing you a cute little Easter decor idea using some Dollar Tree supplies. I took one of these bunny signs from the Dollar Tree as well as a picture frame and all I'm doing is removing the bunny from the sign and removing all the pieces from it. Then I'm going to detach this stand that's on this picture frame as well as remove any embellishments. I used the help of my heat gun to remove that little stand. It was super easy to come off. And once that part was done, I will be adding a lot of hot glue to this bunny decor piece so that I can go ahead and cover the entire bunny with some moss, making this a moss covered bunny. I made sure to also add moss to the outer edges of this bunny just to make sure I covered up all of that pressed wood board. And then I gave this a nice trim to make the moss more tamed looking and flatter. The next thing I did was added some hot glue to the bunny and attach that to the wood stand, making sure that I positioned the bunny um, in a tilted fashion so that it looked like it was sort of jumping. I then added some Excelsior moss or grass to the bottom part of that base. And then I also added some green moss just for some added interest and in color. I trimmed off any excess as needed. I took these cute little carrots from Dollar Tree. I took two of those and then just hot glued them down um, to each side of the base. So now it looks like this cute little bunny is hopping over a field of carrots. I think it's adorable. This was a super easy and fun DIY. As you can see, it literally took such little time to make. And the last bit of embellishment that I will be adding here is to add a cute little fluffy bunny tail. So the only fluffy bunny tail I had on hand were in the colors pink and blue. So what I did to um, fix that was took some of this batting from my stash and I just simply wrapped the existing like pom-pom tail with the batting. It not only covered up the color that I didn't want, but it also made this tail look a lot more fluffy and I just, like I said, I just rolled it up over that little pom-pom and then hot glued it into places just to secure it. And that was such an easy fix just to make my own bunny tail. I then hot glued that bunny tail into place and then just gave it a nice little trim just cutting off any extras and shaping it to a nice round shape. And that was it for this super cute and easy DIY. I hope you guys like this one. Moving right along to the second DIY. This is another fun idea, especially if you are planning on entertaining for Easter. I did start off using these curtain rings and they're just from Dollar Tree. You can use any type of like sh uh, rings that you have, whether it be like those wooden rings that Dollar Tree carries like for macrame or in this case, I'm using um, just repurposing some curtain rings. And all I did was took, took some jute string and wrap the entire piece in that jute. And then the next thing I'm going to do is 
uh, cut two strips of burlap wired ribbon and I'm essentially going to form two bunny ears and I did cut the length that I wanted my ears to be so and I did uh, measure these out before recording um, first things first is I will be folding my ears or my my ribbon in half um, I played around with this in different ways just to see how I was going to get the shape of the ears that I was going to you know going after um, I decided on this method here I did fold the ribbon lengthwise to make it thinner and easier to fold and then I just folded the ears down um, it didn't matter if it had like an opening in the middle because I will be covering that up with some of this gingham ribbon or not ribbon gingham napkin which I will be using as a fabric just to cover up that center and give it more of a decorative touch. I also added some hot glue to close up the ends at the bottom and just to secure it down even more I took pieces of jute twine and just knotted around the bottom section a couple times just to make sure that everything was securely uh, attached. So as you can see, I'm just repeating the same steps to the second piece of ribbon here. And I did have to fuss around with it a bit um, off and on just creating the shape that I wanted it to be. And um, it's perfect because it is wired. So it was a lot easier to shape than if you were using like a non-wired ribbon. So I definitely recommend using wired ribbon because you can um, get the shape that you want a lot more easily. After um, adding some of that jute twine, I just trimmed off the excess and then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the little decorative uh, parts of this bunny ear. I, like I said, this is a uh, napkin that I picked up from the 99. You can use any style or type of fabric that you have on hand. Dollar Tree carries a ton. Um, I like this blue and white gingham pattern for Easter. I think it's super adorable. I went ahead and just freehanded some shapes uh, bunny ear shapes and i wanted it small enough to fit inside the center of each of those bunny ears that i made with a burlap and so i did have to keep trimming it down just to get it to the right size and after i had the exact fit i went ahead and just hot glued those pieces of fabric down into place and you make sure that you um don't cut too small you do need a little bit of that overhang so that it has something to attach to the burlap ribbon. I think the bunny ears are coming into shape. I went ahead and moved on to the next step and that is to attach it to my actual napkin ring. All I did was added some hot glue to each of the ears and then pressed it firmly onto my napkin ring and voila, these are some adorable napkin rings and we are going to make a second version it's this one's even easier than the first one i just did the same thing wrapped the little curtain ring with the jute twine until it was fully covered and then i'm gonna add one of those cute little carrots from dollar tree and i tell you this is the easiest napkin ring you can possibly make um, you can make like a whole set of these that would be super adorable for a nice place setting. I just did one of each of these um, just to show you and give you an idea of how easily you can create your own custom napkin rings. But I could 
make more of these um like i have a different style of napkins on hand um, i have like a pink and white gingham one as well that would make a super fun one just to complement the blue and white version but um this one right here the carrot napkin ring is a lot less time consuming and uh definitely just a quick couple steps and you have yourself some cute and adorable uh, napkin rings for your Easter brunch. Well, I hope I gave you guys a cute idea and maybe you'll give this one a shot. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for you and show you how it looks once I place some napkins into these rings just for a visual on the after. So that was it for the second DIY. I love it and I hope you guys like it too. Let's move on to the third DIY. This one is super easy as well. Um, I took a jar which I recycled and you can pick any um, size or any style of jar, even like canning jars is fine. But this was just like the right size um, for this DIY. And all I'm doing is taking this vellum paper. It's an Easter print from Hobby Lobby. It's super cute. And all I did was just sort of uh, wrap this paper around the jar and just cut off the excess. As you can see, it didn't completely wrap around the entire jar, but that's not a problem. I can easily fix that. All I did was took an, a piece from the... Uh, excess that I cut off and just cut a strip off just to fit the little space that I had left over and I just attached the paper to the jar using some regular tape. I didn't want to permanently attach or adhere this paper um, to this um, and I couldn't think of a less messy way of you know um, attaching this paper than just by using some some tape. And then I just trimmed off the excess at the bottom. And like I said, I just took a extra piece from the extra paper that I had on hand and just um, glued or taped that on to the back as well. So the back is like not necessarily going to be seen a whole lot anyway. So I didn't mind too much if there was like an overlap or it wasn't like perfectly lined up. So after I had my paper um, attached, I went ahead and took a ribbon just to trim off the bottom of my jar, just also to cover up any of the imperfections from the where the paper was cut. I also took some jute twine and wrapped it around like the top rim of the of the jar, um, just for some texture and some dimension. And, um, and then just attached it using some hot glue. Now this is going to be a cute little lantern. And um, what I did to use, or what I did to create like a glow from it is just use some battery operated LED lights from Dollar Tree, but you'll see here shortly. I first went ahead to on making some cute little bunny ears. All I did was took these cute bunny paws from Dollar Tree and turned it upside down and then just went ahead and pinched the uh, center part of it, just cinching it down the middle, um, trying to create what would look like, uh, like bunny ears. So I hot glued different areas in uh, the parts where I created like those pleats, so to speak, and then used some wire just to wrap around the areas that I wanted it to hold. And this is just to keep the fold in place and to make sure that the ears don't unravel. 
It also adds a little bit more structure at the bottom as well, which will help out a lot, especially uh, when I go to hot glue them down onto the jar. I repeated the same steps for the second bunny ear. I think this is a super clever way of just repurposing those bunny paws. And I just came up with this idea on a whim as I was like moving along making this a DIY. And I had these bunny paws and I was like, you know what? What if I just pinch it and then like fold it over and make some cute ears and it turned out perfect. So I just trimmed off the excess from the bunny ears just to the right length that I wanted my ears to be. Now you can make your ears shorter, you can make them longer, however you want them to look. Um, you can make adjustments as needed just by cutting off the amount that you need off of your, your fabric. I went ahead and added the fairy lights to my jar and as you can see it creates a really cute glow. And then I moved on to hot gluing each of the bunny ears down into place. I did have to hold it in place for a little bit just to keep it from falling over. And uh, once that part was done it was super cute. Um, I knew I wanted to add some more embellishment to the top of this lid because I didn't want like the the raw hem of the bunny ears to be visible. You know, I'm all about like clean finishing touches. Like I don't like like things just looking unfinished. So I went ahead and added some of these um, Sola flowers, Sola wood flowers. You can add any type of embellishments that you want to this. Um, if you want to just cover it with some moss and maybe some small eggs, that would be super adorable. But I went ahead and just used these flowers. You can also use like silk flowers or anything that you have on hand that would complement the look of this lantern would work. I then added some moss just to fill in the gaps and to add some more color and interest. And I think this piece came out super adorable. It was super easy, like I mentioned. The only thing that was tricky was trying to shape the bunny ears. But other than that, everything else was super easy and came together quickly. Last but not least, I did want to add a nice little jute twine ribbon. So all I did was took um, some of this jute twine wrapped it around my fingers multiple times i think i did it maybe four or five times just so i would have a thicker uh, ribbon and then just uh, tied that with another piece of jute twine and then just hot glued that down to the center of my bunny super adorable and of course what is a bow without a cute little button. I took a pink button from my stash, hot glued that down into the center of this jute twine bow, and that was it. Super easy, adorable, and a fun little display. Hope you guys like that idea. Let's move right along to DIY number four. I took one of these egg wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. They have a lot of really cute wood decor pieces out for Easter this year. If you are lucky enough to find any of it, I would definitely snatch it up. Super affordable and such a good, you know, buy for $1.25. So I took one of these cute table runners as well from Dollar Tree. It's just made of felt. I went back and forth on what exactly I wanted to do with this table runner. It has a lot of really neat shapes and, you know, interesting designs and whatnot so essentially i just decided on using this one piece right here which is the shape cut out of um, the bunny the first thing i did to this egg was painted it in some java chalk paint it's a java brown chalk paint um, and all i did was did more of a dry brush technique I didn't do a full coverage as you can see. I sort of skipped over certain areas because I knew I wanted this to have more of a distressed finish. When that part was dry, I went ahead and painted over with some white chalk paint. Again, just sort of doing a dry rough coat 
and making sure not to fully cover up the brown parts. I took the leftover piece of the vellum scrapbook paper I had from my previous DIY and just cut out the shape of that egg using the little bunny uh, design that was on that paper as the background to the, this egg shape. And that came out perfectly because it fit nicely behind the felt egg. I thought that was pretty clever. I painted the word sign using some Dixie Bell chalk paint in mint julep. And then I did a distress look to it using some of that Java chalk paint over the top as well. I then glued all my pieces down to this egg using some hot glue. I did also decide on painting the outer edges of the egg using the same Java chalk paint just because I already got a little bit on the side so I just wanted to clean it up a bit just by blending everything together but this is optional. Last but not least I did want a little bow so I made a cute little simple shoestring bow using this gray and white gingham fabric or gingham ribbon and then I also used a yellow button just to top it off and that was it for this super adorable and fun and easy DIY for Easter and would make a nice addition to a, an Easter vignette or to your table setting. I love it and I hope you guys like it too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For my fifth and final DIY, I would have to say this is my favorite of all the DIYs just because it came out super adorable. I do love all the projects in this video. However, there's something about the blue and white that really came across as super spring and cottagey to me, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, all I did was took some white chalk paint and just painted each of these bunnies. Um, giving it full coverage and I will be using some napkins to decoupage but you always want to have like a brighter background before you add your napkin just so that your print will come through um, a lot more brighter and as you can see I did want my bunnies facing uh, the same direction or not the same direction but facing each other so I did have to flip one of my bunnies um, the other opposite direction as you know um, Dollar Tree usually makes their like wood decor, like um, signs and things like that going the same direction. Um, but luckily this one was super easy just to flip over because there wasn't anything behind it. So that's exactly what I did. I took these napkins, super fun and cute. They are from TJ Maxx, but you can get them from Marshalls or Dollar Tree, even um, Ross. I'm sure anywhere that sells decorative napkins. These ones I've had on hand um, for a little over a year now. All I did is remove the plies. I think this one was like a three ply. So I did remove two layers of the backing before adding this one. And I used some decoupage medium. This is just Mod Podge, but you can use whatever uh, decoupage medium you have on hand. And 
you want to make sure that you give your bunnies a nice even coverage just so that you have your um, napkins adhering to all parts of your bunnies and then i did use my brayer just to help smooth down the napkin um, to try to you know get my napkin to stick better and to prevent any air bubbles um, i then took my sanding sponge one once the um, mod podge was dry and i made sure to sand going downwards you never want to sand um, your paper when you have decoupaged onto like a wood piece like back and forth you want to go in one direction preferably going in a downwards motion just so you don't risk lifting your napkin or your paper um, and then i took one of these cute little dollar tree carrots it has a little wood stand at the bottom it was perfect just to help um this is sand much better as well and i hot glued uh the bunny right in the center making sure that it made contact um I mean, I hot glued a carrot in the center, making sure that it made contact with each of the bunnies to make it look like the bunnies were holding the carrot. I think that was super cute. I did add a nice little bow to each of the bunnies using the same gray and white gingham fabric or gingham ribbon. I don't know why I keep calling it fabric, but gingham ribbon and then made some simple shoestring style bows and added a cute little button to the center of each of them and like i said this is my favorite and it came together super quick i mean literally maybe 10 minutes um you can customize this any way you want to fit your aesthetic to fit your color um but i love the blue and white i think it's so adorable i hope you guys like this one as well and hopefully you enjoyed this video and got a lot of ideas and inspiration and that you will go out and make something beautiful for Easter this year. But let's go ahead and take a final look at all the projects. And as always, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate you guys, each and every one of you guys. Um, don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment down below. Just say hello and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next one.